Hi everyone, it's nice to see you guys. Um, so for today, we're going to make two side dishes simultaneously. One is going to be uh, cucumber mutim, and one is going to be cucumber kimchi. And um, they're very similar in the process of how you make them. It's just a, a slight tweak in um, the sauce. And they also last in different um, timelines. So I'll get into that while I present. <clears throat> So I'm just going to do a small presentation just to kind of get everyone on, on the same page. Um, so the steps are we're, we're going to take today will be step one, we're going to cut the cucumbers into however shapes you'd like. I'm going to use two cucumbers for kimchi and five cucumbers for kimchi. And then step two, we're going to boil a pot of water with a handful of coarse salt. Um, or you can use um, fine salt, but fine salt, they, um, get saltier faster. So I would use less salt for that. Um, and then step three, we're going to dunk the cucumber pieces into the pot of boiling um, salt brine while it's very hot, where, while it's like really, really hot. Um, and then step four, we're going to, after 10 to 20 minutes, we're going to drain the cucumber pieces without re rinsing. Um, you can have a taste by the way, and it, it's going to be the same process with carrot kimchi. If it tastes like a salty potato chip, it's a, a good saltiness. If it's a little bit too salty, then you can rinse the cucumbers and then let it sit um, on the drain. Um, if it's not salty enough, I would let it either um, sit for longer or you can also add more salt or um, fish sauce into the mixture um, that we're going to pour. Um, so always, always good to taste as you go. And then while it's draining, we're going to cut the um, vegetables, the garnish that we're going to put in. That's going to be chives, a few pieces of red chili and onion, and sometimes people use carrots. Um, if you don't have them, that's okay too. Um, and then step six, we're going to make the two sauce for the two side dishes. So one for the kimchi, we're going to blend onion, a, a small piece of onion, um, the rest of the chili that we haven't cut up, um, and then two cloves of garlic, five to uh, four to five tables of um, kochukaru, which is the Korean uh, red chili powder. That's a little bit less spicy and a bit sweeter than regular chili powder that you find here. Um, so depending on how spicy you like your um, dish to be, you can adjust the um, kochukaru amount. Um, and then two tablespoons of fish sauce and two tablespoon of either plum sauce or sugar or whatever you have. Um, and then I think ginger would be nice. Some people put ginger in it, some people don't, um, but it's optional. Um, step seven, um, we're going to make the second sauce for the muchim. So we're going to mix one, half a tablespoon of plump sauce or sugar, two tablespoons of soy sauce, one tablespoon of sesame seeds, and one to two tablespoons of uh, sesame oil. And, um, and, and half a tablespoon of minced garlic, two tablespoons of kochukaru and then vinegar. So we're all going to do this together. So I'll tell you about the proportions again when, when we're actually doing them. And then we're going to mix the cucumber into the sauce and garnish. So I'm going to do the half of it, half of the cut onions for muchim, half of it for kimchi. And then um, you can have the muchim right away. Um, whereas kimchi, um, it's better to um, wait a few days for the kimchi to ripen, ripen and then sprinkle some sesame seeds and um, when it's ready to serve. So that's the steps that we're going to take today. And then I also wanted to talk briefly about the history behind this dish. Um, it was really fun researching. So, um, so basically the earliest record of kimchi is in the yellow picture that you see on the very um, left corner. Um, so it's called um, Tsun Tapang. It's a cookbook that's written by Kim Yu in about uh, 1540, uh, during the early period of Joseon Dynasty in Korea. And regarding its title, Sun means um, dignified food, food culture, and Tapang means various methods. So Sun Tapang means ways of making food, uh, food fit for a man or a woman of refined taste. So cucumbers were fully ripe during uh, July and August in Korea. And it says to wipe, not wash, aubergines and cucumbers, um, and then boil three bowls of salt and three pots of water in a big jar. So this, this big jar 
is like half of our height. <laughs> it's probably like one meter high. Um, and in the big jar, we would layer the cucumber and the stems of the leaf of pask flower. Um, and in Korea, we call this halmikot, which means a grandma flower because it's bent, the back is bent like a grandma and it has like this fuzzy white hair. Um, and then it'll, it will layer the cucumber and the pask flower together and then pour the salt brine into the jar while, it, while it's really hot, while it's boiling. And then um, well, until it's covered, like all the veg is covered. And then we'll press the veg down with some stones to prevent them from floating. And then it's said that the cucumbers don't get soft and it tastes very sweet. And the second record says that the, during uh, the uh, Joseon dynasty, a civil official named um, Kim, sorry, Chang, Chang Up Kim, <laughs> traveled up to Beijing for five months and near Tunan River, which is located in North Korea in present day. He was served a small meal, which had cucumber kimchi, and he said that it was good. Um, and the third picture is another record of agriculture, which says to split the cucumbers in three ways and then pour a little bit of chili powder and four to five pieces of garlic into the um, split ends. And then after boiling salt water, um, pour it into the jar and the cucumbers in it. Um, and that's kind of how it was made. So um, that kind of shows the um, transformation of how cucumber kimchi is made. It's actually rumored that cucumber kimchi is actually made earlier than cabbage kimchi that we see now because cabbage kimchi came um, uh, much later in 1900s, I think, from China because we didn't have cabbages in Korea back then. Um, so that was really interesting. And then for the benefits, cucumbers are already known for their hydrating abilities and low calorie weight loss and all that, but they also contain, um, contain a lot of um, minerals and vitamins to help support regular bowel movements. And the peel uh, reversed most of the diabetes associ associated changes and caused a decrease in blood sugar. Um, and then octi and antioxidants, um, so there's like a lot of chemical reactions that come, come and go in, in that process. And uh, there's also a study um, that showed that when cucumbers or any other kind of vegetables are made into kimchi during the fermentation process, the glucose level goes down and the vitamin C go goes down after a certain time period, which is after 10 days. So the optimal uh, nutritional value of kimchi is always around day 10 after making. But um, I think it depends on the temperature of your house, um, of your fridge. In Korea, we have a refrigerator just for kimchi, which is around minus one to two degrees. Um, but it's different than freezing them um, in, in a freezer. So it depends on what, what kind of conditions you would put them in. Um, so I think that's about it. And I also wanted to announce that we have the cookbook um, on the website and it's going to go on, this recipe is, go on, is going to go on the website um, after a few weeks. Um, I think that's about it. And we're going to get started on making the cucumber kimchi. So I can leave the recipe up for you guys if you'd like, or if you want to see um, what I'm cutting and doing uh, up close, I can close it. So I'm gonna move over to the kitchen. Um, and show you, so what I've set up so far. So I got red onions, which we don't really use in Korea, but um, that's what I've got. So I'm gonna go work with that. And I've got the garlic and ginger and the red chili, and I'm going to start cutting the cucumbers. So what, what um, we do for the muchim is that it's going to be like a typical cucumber uh, pickle shape. So just about three millimeters thick, like so. I don't know if you can see that clearly. Like this. Um, and then I'm just going to do two uh, cucumbers in this shape and put them aside. I'll turn on the music again. Um, and then let's get chopping. Oh, 
Oh, and if I haven't mentioned before, it's, you should be boiling a big pot of water with the um, salt, by the way. Some people have arrived after that, so I'm going to remind you guys again to... So mine's looking like this. I've got a big pot of water and some salt and I'm going to reheat it while I'm cutting the um, cucumbers. Okay, so I finished topping up two cucumbers for the new machine and for the kimchi, I'm going to cut them into a different shape. Um, and you can cut it however you'd like, but in kimchi, we will cut them into a big piece like so. And then cut them halfway. So this is like a very typical kimchi, cucumber kimchi shape. So it'll be attached at one end and then split into four pieces at the top. And then you would kind of stuff the um, sauce into the middle and the garnish, and then we'll just kind of like let it sit there. And it's supposed to hold the kimchi better, um, but it's honestly, I think, because people think it looks pretty. So you can just cut them into four um, shapes or what, however shapes you'd like. Wow, that's different. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so my pot of water is boiling, so I'm going to start putting all of my cucumbers into the pot. Are you going to let the water continue to boil or do you just turn it off and add the cucumbers? Um, I'm going to turn it off and add the cucumbers. I don't think my pot is big enough, actually. I'm going to boil another pot of water. <laughs> Are you putting the salted, um, sorry, the sliced cucumbers in the boiling water, right? Yeah. How salty are we supposed to make the uh, water? Oh, sorry, there's a lot of ringing. Is that Mateo? Oh, hi, Mateo. Um, so the salty water, it's supposed to be around like the taste of seawater. Um, and basically when the cucumber is salted properly, it'll taste like potato chips. And if it's too salty, you can rinse them. If it's not salty enough, you can add more salt into the um, sauce that we're going to make. Good question. Awesome, thanks. Okay, so I finished cutting the, uh, all the cucumbers. I'm just going to wait for the other um, pot to start boiling and then I'll put them in. And make sure to kind of stir, move around the cucumber in the salt water so that they get salted properly. So mine's looking like this. So I'm going to make sure that all parts of the cucumber gets dumped into the hot water. You would imagine that the cucumbers get all wilty, but they actually don't. And they retain the crunch better when you do this stuff. Okay. 
I'm gonna let that sit. And I'm gonna continue chopping the garnish. if you dare, um, you can kind of have a taste of the red chili to see how spicy or sweet it is. So you can adjust your sauce to um, your ingredient. Oh, it's not that, it's not spicy at all, actually. So I think I can, sorry. sorry? So which one do you put in? Do you put these one in the, in the pot? Yeah, so I, I've already boiled a pot of salt water. So you have a big pot of water and put a lot of salt in it, make it taste about as salty as the ocean. And then okay, put so all of the- in, the put these two in? Yeah, yeah. Um, turn off the heat and when it's boiling and then just dunk them all in there. Oh, so it's all cucumbers, so sliced and the uh, chunky ones? Yeah. So, oh, okay. yeah, these ones are going to be used for muchin. So that's the first side dish. Right. And then the big ones, the chunky ones, will be for the kimchi. Okay, but we're putting them all in the salted water. Yes, all of them. Okay. Yeah. So you can only, you, you can use um, one onion for both of the dishes, but mine is quite small. So I'm going to use two onions. Um, for the buchin, because it's not cooked, um, it's going to be better if the onions are very thinly sliced, whereas kimchi, because there's a fermentation process, it doesn't add finely enough. Where is there the Where is there the Is that the onions you're cutting? Yes, I'm cutting the onions for the muchin. Um, I'm going to use one of my um, small onion for muchin and one for kimchi. If you have one big one, then you can use just half of it. Mm -hmm. how, how thinly do you cut it? Um, for the muchin, the thinner the better. Kimchi, it really doesn't matter. It's going to be fermented, so um, it doesn't matter how thin they are. Okay. Rebecca? Yeah. I have to tell you, my pepper is yeah. a scotch bonnet. <laughs> I don't know oh. if you've ever had that. I had it, I thought it would be hot. I had a teeny tiny piece. Yeah. It's really early here. My mouth is burning. Oh it's no, so okay. Okay, you don't yeah. have to put them in if you don't want to. Um, you can just put as put, little as you want. Yeah, I think maybe a tiny, tiny piece. Okay. okay. <laughs> yeah, definitely be careful with those. It's good to have a taste always. Yeah, I wasn't, I, I wasn't sure. I didn't think it would be that high. <laughs> okay, so my Zoom link, we're going to run out of time in about 10 minutes. We're going to re-enter the chat and continue like we always do. So. Oh, also, my other pot is boiling, so I'm going to dunk the rest of the cucumber. Okay. And um, how long do we leave the cucumber in? So it depends. Sometimes people do it for half an hour. Sometimes people would do it for overnight. Um, it really depends on how salty you like your side dishes to be. 
Okay. Um, but I think 10 to 20 minutes is completely fine. I'm going to continue chopping um, the rest of the onions. This one I'm just going to roughly chop because it's going into the kimchi. Now I think I've chopped everything except for the minced garlic that'll go into, but I think it's going to be hard to kind of distinguish the two um, side dishes. So I'm going to bring um, a mixing bowl, but I don't have a bowl, so I'm just going to get a container. So this is going to be for the muchin, and then um, I'll make another one for the kimchi. So I'm going to put the thinly sliced onions into the muchin bowl. Okay, and then um, for the kimchi, I'm going to use this jar. So I'm going to put the roughly sliced onions into the jar and the garnish um, red peppers. Um, and then I'm going to use two garlic for the kimchi um, and then two garlic, uh, one garlic uh, clove for the mochi. How's everyone's cucumbers looking? Mine looks okay. I'm just waiting for the other one to boil. The okay. Sounds good. Yeah. Start mincing um, one clove of garlic for the routine. Okay, I think that's pretty good. So I'm going to put the minced garlic into the mixing bowl. <laughs> Is that Yasmin? Oh, I thought the thing was off. Yes, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's okay. Uh Okay, so I've gotten the minced garlic in there and I'm, I'm just going to put two cloves of garlic into the blending that we're going to do for the kimchi. So in my mixture, I'm going to um, kind of guide you into what to mix. But first, I think it's time that I'm going to drain. Um, sorry, I'm going to stop the music. I'm going to uh, drain the first pot of cucumbers and let it kind of um, dry and cool at the same time. And then we'll prepare the um, all the sauce that we're going to make. So I'm going to let that sit. And then I think for the other pot, it should be getting salted pretty good. I can kind of taste one to see where they are. Okay. Oh, my 
pounds, not salted enough. Um, I think I'm gonna put more salt into the salt uh, sauce that I'll be making later. Okay. I'll let this sit for a bit more. Um, so I'll start by making um, the sauce for the vuchim. So if you look at the recipe um, on the screen right now, re-entering, I'm gonna start recording again. Um, no, this is totally separate from her company thing. No, it's her her private. Oh, I can hear you. <laughs> Your mic is on. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Um. Okay. So to continue making the sauce, <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> um. To making to continue making the sauce. Uh, I think that's six, uh, step seven. So we're going to start by mixing the minced garlic. We've got the thinly sliced onions. Um, I'm going to take my hot chili powder. This is not kochukara, by the way. Kochukara is supposed to be a lot bigger and um, milder, but it's what I've got. So I'm gonna use this. Okay. So um, let's see, two tablespoons of kochukaru, but I'm gonna use one tablespoon just in case it's too spicy because this is a lot spicier than kochukaru. I'm gonna put one tablespoon of that and two tablespoons of vinegar. I've got my vinegar. What's this sauce for? This is for the buchim. So buchim is the side dish so the word mochim actually is a verb. It means to kind of smush with your hand. Um, and um, basically it's not cooked. It's not, um, it's not a fermentation process. It's basically just a smushed vegetable with different kinds of spices. So um, mochim is not cooked. That's why I think it's better if the um, onions are thinly sliced rather than roughly sliced. Okay. I'm going to give that tiny bit of acidity and so you've, you've got this you, you, you guys can all see the screen right all the steps uh yeah yeah sorry I had when I rejoined I, I wasn't in the room so you ah. had the um red pepper and then two tablespoons of vinegar yeah so it's all written on step seven so step seven is a muchin sauce making so you add one, um, half a tablespoon of minced garlic, that's about one clove, and two tablespoons of kochukaru, but I just added one just because mine is a lot spicy, and two tablespoons of vinegar, one tablespoon of plum sauce or sugar, and two tablespoons of soy sauce, and okay. one tablespoon of sesame seeds, and yeah, so on. Um, I got my soy sauce. I've got two kinds actually. This one is liquid aminos, and then this one is from um, I think it's coconut aminos. Yeah, this one's coconut aminos. I'm going to mix one tablespoon of each, just so that I can have different kinds of flavors in there. What's aminos? What what was that? Oh, okay, so. Liquid aminos is um, kind of like an alternative to soy sauce. It has less sodium, so it's better for you, but it also has some kind of um, um, soy protein in it. So it mimics the taste of soy sauce, but just less um, sodium. And I also use coconut aminos. Coconut aminos is basically soy sauce mimicked by um, coconut. So people who, are, um, who don't do well with soy, it's better for them to use either two of these ingredients. 
I also have regular soy sauce, but it's very, very um, dark, but the taste wasn't um, as good as the ones that we have in Korea. So I wanted to try using this, uh, two different kinds of soy sauce. So I've got the soy sauce in and I'm going to do my plum sauce. So this one I'm quite proud of. Um, this is homemade from Korea that my mom made. It's basically half sugar and half plum sauce, uh, half uh, sour plums. And then um, you just leave it for months. And then this whole extract comes out of it. The liquid is completely from the plums themselves. We didn't put any water. Um, so I brought it from Korea and basically you just put one tablespoon of it. And I'm using, using it very, I'm not using it sparingly because it, it just took so much to bring it all the way from Korea. Um, and then what else? Um, sesame oil and sesame seeds. This is just honestly how, however much you want. You can add as much or as little as you want. I got my sesame seeds. I'm going to add about one tablespoon. sesame oil. I want to add two tablespoons just because I love it. Okay, so this mixture is ready for the butin as soon as we drain and um, squeeze the cucumber pieces. Um, so that's just going to sit there. Okay, speaking of the cucumber pieces, I think it's ready to drain the second pot. So, here are the smaller pieces for the butchim. Um, normally we would use cheesecloth to kind of really squeeze out all the liquid, but I don't have cheesecloth, so I'm going to just kind of let it sit and maybe I can try to smush it down with the spatula, but there's not much liquid coming out. So I'm just gonna let it sit. Okay. And then now I'm going to make the mix for the kimchi. So kimchi, oh, we always have fish sauce that I brought from Korea. Bring another spoon. So for this sauce, this is all written down on step six. So we have um, the rest of the chili that I didn't chop up from the garnish. Um, I put two cloves of garlic, um, three, four to five tablespoon of kochukaru, which I'm going to put. Because um, this is a lot more cucumber than the buchim, I can allow myself to kind of put more kochukaru in it. Mm. I'm actually going to chop up this red chili just because I don't think it'll blend well if it's just it sits there like this. the chili, garlic, gochugaru, and two tablespoons of fish sauce. And then two tablespoons of plum sauce. You guys, it's snowing again. Do you see the snow? You can't? Oh no, okay, it's snowing quite a lot actually. It's been snowing today um, since the morning, but it stopped and then now it's coming in. Um, anyway, so I'm going to add two tablespoons of spoon, plum sauce. This is ready to go. 
And of course you can add water to make it uh, blend smoothly. Ready. Turn off my mic for a second. Oh, I think I have to stop sharing to do that. No. So I think this is ready. Um, I'm going to grab my pieces of cucumber and I'm going to find a bigger container, put, th put these in because they're definitely not going to fit into my jar. Um, So I'm going to separate them into three different kinds, I think. I think I'm going to let them sit. So the cucumber that isn't cut completely will go onto the bottom. This one is half cut off, but that's okay. Okay, so this container is ready to be sauced. Um, I'm thinking maybe it'll be okay to... Okay, I think it actually fits perfectly. Rebecca, put the kimchi sauce, you yeah. mix it up and then add water. Yeah, so basically I blended all of my um, sauce in here. So I put kochukaru, fish sauce, plum sauce, garlic, red chili. Um, oh, you're supposed to mix them. <laughs> yeah, so I put them into a blender and then they're on here. So I'm just going to kind of layer the garnish in between the cucumbers and okay i made a mistake but i can improvise what happened uh, so i put in the onions in there oh you you can't put a piece of um onion in. that's actually completely fine it doesn't need to be chopped up um it's only for texture with the sauce, with the sauce. sorry i put it with the sauce with the sauce. Yeah. Yeah, that's okay. That's okay if it's blended. Okay. In that case, I can do that. Yeah, sometimes um, we have, we blend onions, um, apple or pear into the sauce so that the sauce is sweeter and has more um, different kinds of flavors going through. So that's completely fine. Um, and honestly, we're like all improvising um, together anyway, and it's all a big experiment, so that's okay. So <clears throat> the chunky onion with um, the fish sauce and all of that, is that, that's for the kimchi, right? Yes, yes, that's correct. 
Are we blending that or we're just layering it? Um, I'm going to put them in between the cucumbers, um, but you can, you can blend them like mom did. So it depends on what you prefer. If you don't like the onion texture in your kimchi, then you can put them out, uh, pick them out and just put them into your sauce. Or um, for me, I like having onions in between kimchi, so I'm going to just um, layer them. Okay, and if your um, your kimchi cucumbers are too salty, do you, I mean, I've already put my fish sauce, like all the, the stuff for the sauce is, yeah. is already mixed in a bowl. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, so I tasted some of my cucumbers, the sliced cucumbers for the kimchi, and they're a little bit on the salty side. So um, what do I do about that? Um, well, honestly, when it's too salty, then it's hard to manage than having it bland. Where, um, so it's kind of like when you cook rice, when it's too watery, it's hard to handle. Whereas if it's too little water, you can just add more water and cook it more. Mm -hmm. So honestly, I think, I think you should maybe add more cucumbers. Um, later on, uh, if you want, you can just grab some more tomorrow and mm -hmm. put them into the batch and that'll kind of soak up the saltiness and balance out the salty pieces with the unsalty pieces. Okay. Um, that's what I would do. Or you can just add a bit more water into the mixture and be okay with the fact that your kimchi is gonna be a little bit watery. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. So my, um, the, the muchin, it's, uh, it's not gonna be ready yet for a few minutes because uh -huh. I had to reboil. Uh, okay, and that's okay. So I think, yeah, I like that. And do you add water to the to the, the the sauce with the fish sauce in it? Yes, for the kimchi sauce, um, definitely add some water so that it'll blend better. And um, it's completely okay to add more or less water. So um, remember this slide that I showed you? I'm gonna click and try to show you. I can go to it. The recipes, oh yeah, okay. For, yeah, so if you see the different pictures on the right side, so there's mm -hmm. really different kinds of, um, this is all just cucumber kimchi, by the way. Um, they can be cut into different shapes. They can be carved inside. They can be watery. They don't have to be watery. It all depends on how you prefer them and okay. what kind of ingredients you use. So okay. you're free to do however you, you want them to be. Um, okay. And um, I don't have to blend it, right? The, the sauce. The I just add more water and then layer the cucumbers with it. For the kimchi? Mm -hmm. For the kimchi, I blended mine because there's an, um, um, garlic and red chili that I put in. But if you didn't put any um, like chunky bits, if you already minced the garlic, then you don't have to blend it. OK. I'm going to blend it. So I just mute myself. So mine is smelling amazing. It's smelling exactly how kimchi paste is supposed to smell like. So I'm just going to pour the mixture over the two containers that I've separated. And then I'm going to rinse them with water and add some more. Is the sauce going to be enough for everything? Um, it depends on how mild you like your stuff. So I want mine to be a little bit mild, but also a bit watery. So oh. this is, yeah, this is how it's going to look like. But then also the water from the cucumber is going to leach out over time. And it's going to make it more watery and the mixture would be better. So what I do is normally after I let it ferment for about a day, I shake it up so that the sauce will get in between all the vegetables. Mm -hmm. um, and so I do it every day. So I burp the jar so that it won't explode and um, also shake them up. It'll explode if you don't let the gas out. <laughs> It'll look, yeah, so fermentation products are really um, tricky in this way. So because of the methane that is created from the fermentation process, the gas will kind of build up. So that's why when you open a pickle jar or any kind of fermentation, it'll kind of like, um, yeah. yeah. 
Mm. So this jar is ready, I think. I'm just gonna give it a good shake. Did I start recording this? Yes, I did. Wait, did I? I'm just going to make sure that it's recording. Yes, it is, okay. So I'm just going to let this one rest. And this container is also good to go. And I'll be putting updates on our dishes on the Instagram. Um, so you can kind of see how it turns out. Um, and then now, I'm going to go ahead with the mochim that I made. So this is the sauce that I already made. If you don't know what the sauce is, I'll go back to the slide of the recipe and it's on the six, step six. Oh no, step seven. Yeah, step seven. So I've already got this kind of sauce ready. All I need to do is put the cucumbers in there and let it marinate for about a few hours. You can just eat them right away, honestly. It's fine if you just eat them right away. I'm going to mix it. It smells amazing. Anything sesame, I think, just makes it smell really nice. Did you put ginger into anything? Yes, I did put a nub of ginger into the kimchi blend. Okay. Um, but that's optional. You can put like carrots, in, uh, gar gr grated carrots as a garnish as well, if you'd like. Um, and sometimes, as I said, we would put either like a piece of um, onion or apple, pear or persimmons in them. This is looking great. I'm gonna give it a taste and see how it's turned out. Mm. How is it? <laughs> it's good. It's a little spicier than I thought, but I think I want to put more sesame oil and um, salt on it. It's really good, actually. It'll go so nicely with rice, I think. It's the one you put in the the other sauce instead of soy sauce, right? What was the name? The Al something? Um, liquid aminos. Mm. So this is the liquid aminos. And then I also have coconut aminos that I put in. <clears throat> I think I should put more of it instead of salt. Is that sauce like salty, like soy sauce? Yeah, it tastes exactly like soy sauce, but just less sodium. Mm. Yeah, it just mimics um, soy sauce, basically. This is really good, though. <laughs> I'm um, surprised by myself. <laughs> yeah, this is perfect. Okay, I'm going to find a container for the machine, so I'll have it for the next few days. No, I don't know. Sorry, I'm a bit behind. Um, 
that's okay. So you, la you layered the kimchi with the sauce? Like you just put a layer in, layer of yeah. cucumber in, and then add it to the sauce? Yeah, so I'll show you how it looks at the moment. So I put the onion, um, the red chili, and That's the not sauce. kimchi. Isn't that muchi? No, this is a kimchi. So with the chunky, uh, oh. Yeah, so the kimchi is the chunky ones with the chunky oh, yeah. onions and yeah. Did you switch them up? I did. That's okay. Um, okay. The shape doesn't really matter. I thought you were um, putting stuff in the... Uh... Oh yeah, I'm totally confused. <laughs> That's okay, it happens. It's nice cucumber. I thought that was for the uh, kimchi, but it's not. It's for the muchim. This one. The slice. The slice is for the muchim and the chunky oh. one is for the kimchi. All right. Hmm. Sorry. That's um, okay. You know what? I'm just going to strain it. I think that will work. Yeah, it's hard to make two dishes simultaneously. I was wondering if I should do it or not. Um, but I thought maybe it'll be good to give it a go. But it is hard to manage, honestly. It, it is kind of confusing. Uh, Rebecca, what are you doing now? I'm just putting the buchim into a container so that I'll, I can have it for the rest of the week. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, so I'm going to talk about how, I'll just tell you now. So muchim lasts only about a week because it's not fermentation, it's just for immediate consumption, whereas kimchi, they can last for uh, more than a month. Um, so they're just different kinds of preparations. All right, okay. Oh, sorry. Um, all right, so this is all good to go. And I'll put it in, in the fridge. Oh no, I spilled some of the sauce, but that's okay. I'll clean it up. So I think that's it for today. How are your, your um, dishes coming along? I have a quick question. Yeah. So for the mouchine, the sauce that we're using is with the sliced onions, right? Yeah. Uh, yes. Mouchine is a sliced yeah. onions and but the shape doesn't matter if your kimchi has um, sliced shapes, that's completely okay. Um, okay. And muchim, you can just cut them into different shapes um, and it's completely fine. Okay. Um, I just wanna make sure I use the right sauce for the right cucumber. Right, right. <laughs> um, I'll post the video on to YouTube so you can see the slides again and look into the details of the recipe and if you have any questions, of course, you're always welcome to email me or um, ask me on Instagram and I'll, I'll guide you along. Um, I think that's about it. Of course, I just wanted to make sure that everyone takes a look at the cookbook and the website um, and always let me know if you have any questions. And this is the end. How are yours, are your products looking and the outcomes, Man? I have a quick question while we're waiting. Yeah. Um, so for the muchin, did you, like what kind of container did you put that in once it was mixed with the sauce? Like just any container is fine? Yeah, any container is fine. You can just, because it's not a fermentation, it's just gonna sit in the refrigerator. So you can be in a glass container, plastic container. Um, and if you only make a small amount, sometimes we just put it in a bowl and cover it with something on top. So anything, um, it's really up to you. 
something like this for the kimchi one. So the sauce is underneath, and I'll just put uh, cucumber and some chili. Chili and onions. Honestly, you can just put any kind of garnish. Sometimes people put grated carrots on top. Um, make sure because it's kimchi. Kimchi is a fermentation, so it's gonna sit outside. So make sure it's in a like a tightly. It's in like a jar or like a container that uh, closes quite well. Okay, gotcha. Um, I need to get a container for it. Sorry. I need to get a container for it. Oh, oh you don't have a container at home for yeah. it. All right. Um. Yeah, it's better to have a container for kimchi, I think. Um, but it, it can just sit there for now, I think. Maybe you can get it today. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I think that's that's it. Does anybody else have any other questions? How does the muchim sit in the fridge the whole time or is it on the counter for a day? No, no, muchim is not a fermented um, dish at all. So it's just to be consumed right away. So you can okay. put it in the fridge. And that'll last for about a week. And then kimchi, you can put it in room temperature. Um, for I'm going to put it for about three days. Um, and then I'm going to put it into the fridge after that. OK. Thank you so much. I have no to problem. say. Yeah. Um, you really have looking, like, oh, sorry, sorry. Continue. <laughs> say, really looking forward to, um, to sampling this. Um, um, I found it confusing, though, working on two. Because yeah. I, you know why? Because I had to leave the room. Ah, okay, gotcha. So, but yeah, this is great. Thank you. No problem. No problem. Thank you so much for coming. Um, always, like, you can take pictures um, and send it to me via email or tag me on Instagram. And um, I'm really looking forward to how it turns out. I'm actually really liking the buchim. I'm like surprised myself. I like waiting for my rice to cook and I'm going to have it with my rice. <laughs> yeah, you could, you have these things timed so that um, once we're done, you can go eat your lunch. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Sorry, Chloe, were you about to say something? Yeah, I was just going to ask, like, other than rice, do you have any recommending dish to, you know, eat it with? Eat it with? Yeah, great, great um, question. So usually any kind of side dishes, Korean side dishes, it's usually eaten with rice, but um, sometimes um, in Western culture, they would put it in um, like sandwiches, in wraps. Um, I've seen it in like bowls or sometimes even on top of um, like salad or noodle salads, they would put kimchi on top, um, like grilled cheese with kimchi. I've seen those before. So you can just get creative with anything. Um, you can just eat it with toast and eggs and avocados. That also goes great. Um, it's just depending on how how you like to utilize them, you can just kind of get creative with it. Um, cucumber is like such a refreshing thing to add on any kind of dish. So I'm just going to like play around with it. Last time I made kimchi, I had like soba noodles and then I put some like sauce on it and then I put some um, kimchi on top so that can work as well. Um, so yeah, it can go as, as freely as you want. <laughs> Any other last minute questions? Nope. All right. I think that's it. Thank you so much for coming, guys. Thank you. It was fun. Bye. -bye. Thanks for coming.